So today we're going to talk about maintaining your keg. One question we hear brought up over and over and over again is, how do I clean this thing? And so we thought we'd put a live together and we'll talk about it and answer any questions. So let's get started. I'm going to give you right now the most cinematic keg cleaning footage, compliments of Matt Blackmer. So <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Thank you, Matt, for that very beautiful cinematography. Yeah, as you can see in that video, Matt's keg at that time wasn't wrapped. That was a really old one that he had. So don't take a scrub brush to these on the outside. Um, Once they're wrapped, that's not really super necessary, but it was just such great footage we had to put it in. So as you saw, he was using Dawn dish soap to clean his keg. That's perfectly fine. Some people only use hot water. The brush he was actually using in there is a brush we keep at our shop for cleaning tires. You don't need one of those. Normally, I'll just use a white scrubby pad, like the ones that our tinners are about to throw away off their scrubbers and things like that, real beat up nasty ones. You don't need anything great or super abrasive. Just something with a little bit of scrub left is perfectly fine. I like using a socket. This is a 11 16th. I like using sockets because especially the deep weld ones, they stay really out of the way. And you can actually remove and clean your dip tubes. Try not to drop anything. So it's the same process on the larger kegs. Obviously this tube is just a lot smaller. You know, you want to clean the outside of it. While you've got this off and while you're cleaning your keg, really, you should be inspecting your O-rings because they do wear out over time. That one right here, right up at the top. You have one on the outside of your post, which this one gets beat up a lot. And then on underneath your post, you have what's called a poppet. And there's one right on here as well. So since you're going to have it out and have it getting cleaned, you definitely want to take a look at those just because that's going to be the best time to do it. We also sell dip tube cleaning brushes, which are going to seem like overkill for this little tiny scuttle butt tube, but on the five gallon kegs, they don't go all the way through. So you would want to not only clean it from this end, but also from this end as well on a five. But these just go in and come out, you know, scrub it up a little bit, rinse them out. But like I said, you know, you're just gonna wanna take a scrubby, scrub out the inside. Um, the only thing you really can't use is bleach. I know that there's some tinners that use it and swear by it. The problem with bleach and stainless steel is that bleach will pit stainless steel. So if it gets pitted, anything in here, any sort of bacteria is gonna sit in those grooves and it's gonna make your gumming up problems a lot worse. I personally just fill it with hot water. If I'm feeling real adventurous, I'll throw dish soap in there. But you really don't need much. You just need something to get whatever is gunked up off of it. And then when you're done rinsing and all of that, you just put everything back together. And that's the basics of cleaning the actual tank itself. Let's switch back to me for a minute. Now the O-ring she spoke of, we do sell a pack of O-rings. Now. This is different than what you might find on Amazon or something like that because these are like the harder O-rings, the ones that are actually made to take this kind of pressure. If you just buy a, a corny keg O-ring kit on Amazon, you're going to get the same O-rings that come in the keg. We don't discourage people from building their own kegs. It really isn't rocket science. What we try to do is just embrace your time so we'll take the time put it all together and make it right for you and back it and then you can spend your time making the money because let's face it some people don't want to be keg builders some people want to be window tinners if you do want to build your own keg though go out and homebrew store or amazon or whatever and buy any corny keg it's really 
The tank itself's not there that critical. They're all rated at 130 psi. That's a burst rating. That's not the amount of air that they'll hold. Typically, the pressure release valve in these things will pop at about 70 psi, and for some people that's enough. But a lot of tinners that I know actually prefer to go all the way up to 100, 110. Now with this O-ring set, you're going to get a large O-ring replacement O-ring for the lid. And honestly, I'd throw that in a, a drawer someplace and save it for because your lid O-ring is going to be absolutely fine. The two red ones, they're going to be for the dip tubes and the ones that come in here are fine. What, what's really going to be key is the little tiny ones. And the little tiny ones, they're really hard and they're going to handle the pressure you give them. They're also going to increase the pressure of the pressure release valve from 70 to 110 PSI. So that's, that's the big thing about that. So if you're building your own keg, spend, I don't know what they are, $5 or something like that. But for the low cost of whatever one of these is, it'll, it'll make your future a lot better. Yeah, but, I forgot. This is your pressure release valve. It comes out of your lid. It just screws right out. There is no ring there for you to also check. That's one of these tiny little ones. And if your pressure release valve is popping too soon and you're not getting enough pressure, that's probably what the problem is. And we do have those O-rings that will increase your pressure on your pressure release valve. Well, and then you've got also on your um, posts, <laughs> part of the reason why it's so important to replace those O-rings on there, and not like I'm speaking from experience or anything, but let's say you took your keg out and you went to a new account that maybe you've never installed for before and then maybe as you're packing up you take your hose off and you didn't bother replacing that o-ring so uh <laughs> maybe it slips off and sprays you in the face and your dad stands there and laughs done it <laughs> and doesn't do anything no, and so lets you take a gallon of water to the face not, yeah, not, not cute, not great. Spraying. And if you were on a flat glass job and not in, say, a nasty, dirty body shop, I don't think the customer would be too pleased with that. So just, just a note. That's important information. So that pretty much covers the keg, um, checking out your O-rings and everything. We're going to get into hoses, and how, how do you go about cleaning your hoses? You can see this line. I mean, this is terrible. I shouldn't have let it get this bad. I've been using this tank um, five, six days a week for the past, I don't know, three years now. You know, Matt came to us with an old keg that he bought from one of the tool distributors with that blue coily hose. The blue coily hose is not ideal. The inside of it is, is sticky to build up. And as you can see, as black as his hose was, I mean, we started out with the Flexzilla hose mainly because people thought it was cool. And then we realize that it gets dirty like as soon as you open the box before you even put your hands on it, it's starting to get dirty. Now on the inside, it's kind of hard to tell on the Flexilla. I'm going to come real close. And on the inside, this is like a silicone base and nothing sticks to this stuff. The blue hose is a little easier. See, Flexilla, it blends too much. So on our blue hose, same construction, but you can see the white in there. And that's a silicone lining. I have a video with me cutting apart a Flexilla hose that's had water sitting in it for over a year unused. That should have been the nastiest hose. And when I cut it open, it was just clean. You know, nothing stuck to it. The makeup of your hose is, is really critical. I know a lot of guys say that, you know, you can build a keg and you can build a keg for under $100 and you can buy a hose for $10. Do not buy $10 hose. And if you do, get backups because I don't know a good way to I mean running bleach through the hose is probably good but as Brittany said you don't want to put bleach in your tank because over time it's going to pit the inside of your tank making your tank get dirty faster so spend a little extra money on the hose the blue hose we prefer it for a couple of reasons um over the flexilla and I'm going to show you I got two full pieces here I'm going to see if I can do this on the camera but the Flexilla hose you're going to find out is about 0.43 inches. It should be a half inch diameter. So if you ever bought a keg from us and got the blue hose, you will notice that the uh, 
swivel, when we put the swivel on, there's black up here. We put shrink tube on there to create girth because this should thread onto the hose, but as you see, I'll come in a little bit closer, but it doesn't even kind of thread onto it. The blue hose, on the other hand, 0.51. Now the inside diameter on both of these is a quarter inch. So that just tells you that the wall on this hose is a little bigger. But to give you an idea of the difference, this is going to be a sturdier connection because I can't push this on. I actually have to thread this on to get it to go onto the hose. And so when you put the other part of the swivel in, it's going to thread into the center of the hose through this piece and it's just going to tighten down and balloon this out here. So that's, that's the biggest difference between the hoses and that's why we picked up the blue hose. And upon request we also have the exact same hose, it's the Tundra series, we have it in yellow and red and gray. The gray is a polyer but same construction, it's just a little bit stiffer. This stuff is every bit, actually it's limper than the Flexilla hose and it's even a heavier hose. But let's go to the filters and something a lot of people don't know, Matt can explain it better than I can. And thanks Matt for letting us use this video footage from the video you made so long ago. So I'm actually really dreading showing you guys this. Um, there's actually a filter in here and I've never cleaned it out before because I didn't realize there was a filter in here. I've been using this tank um, five, six days a week for the past, I don't know, three years now. Oh man. Oh, oh, shit. Oh. Oh, that's gross. If you learn anything from this video, please wash out your filters. They're in the plastic guns, and they're also in the brass ones, apparently. And as he said, it's in the plastic ones, and apparently it's also in the brass ones. And just like he showed, if you unscrew the tip of your sprayer, and it's the same thing with the with the brass one or the plastic ones, you just unscrew the tip. It's normally, if you buy an assembled piece, you're going to get one with a 50 mesh filter. That's not going to keep junk out of your tent. 200 mesh filter is a little bit better, as you can see. And so many people don't realize that there is a filter in here. He went for three years and you saw how nasty that thing was. So the cool thing about these is they're stainless steel with a poly body. And even after, you saw how clean his came after so many years. Not such a big deal. We also have an inline filter some people choose. Now, we don't, I mean, we'd love to sell you everything that we sell. But we're not trying to sell you something you don't need. If you monitor your water and you use the same water all the time and you know what your water source is going to be from one fill up to the next fill up, you probably don't need one of these. This is an inline filter. It's got a little arrow on it telling you which way it should go. It's got a clear bowl on the bottom so you can see. In the same construction, we'll go ahead and unscrew it. Um, and if you unscrew this while it's attached to your keg, make sure your keg's not pressurized. Otherwise, pop your hose off your keg before you do this. You pop this out. This little filter just fits right down into a groove here. Same thing with here. It just fits into a groove and seals. And this filter, you can rinse out. Uh, some people take a little nail brush because it's a super fine mesh. This is a 40 micron or a 250 mesh. So it's a little bit finer than the tip filter if, you know, you're, like I said, concerned about what you're putting in. But this is, again, poly construction with a stainless steel. And you'll notice that's the trend with the parts that we put in it. And if you want to build your own keg, we're not going to steer you wrong. Ask us if, you know, I found this, is it something that's suitable? And we'll tell you the truth, yes or no. And you don't have to buy the parts from us, but you can. And <laughs> we prefer you to. Also, if you are building your own keg, I guess while we're on that part of the subject, clamps. We use these, and they're basically a fuel injector clamp, um, but they're stainless steel. And it's a heavy-duty clamp. It's a little bit hard to see, but it's a heavy-duty clamp, and it's basically like a T-bolt clamp, or nut on one side and a, and a bolt through the other side, and it clamps down really nice and secure, and it'll never rust. Because that's the other thing you don't want dragging around with your hose is rust. Um, but from here, let's, let's go on to the 
the swivel end of it and this is a flexilla fitting for this hose so now this will fit onto here so it threads on and there we go all good to go <laughs> so i thought i might need to but i wasn't sure um it's leaking you can see it right now i didn't put teflon tape on the black end but so teflon tape is very critical now you'll notice on all of our stuff we use the gas and water teflon tape the yellow stuff it's a little more durable than the white but that's not why we use it it has a signature it looks cool um all you need is the white teflon tape we use this it just helps us identify our product a little bit easier one thing that some of our customers will tell you is i've seen people ask questions about a problem they're having and notice the yellow tape and I'll reach out to the customer and let them know that you know whatever problem they're having I'm here to take care of it because our stuff also comes with a lifetime warranty so it's a little helpful but nonetheless it's a must threads going into any other threads you know metal to metal like that you're gonna need thread tape now the swivel he had Matt really helped us to figure out that that's a bad swivel Sometimes you have to try something and find out that it's a bad idea before you can know it's a bad idea. The problem with the Flexilla swivel is it's made out of aluminum. And if anybody's ever worked around aluminum and water, you know that water corrodes aluminum. Um, they call it like aluminum rust, but it turns white and corrodes. The other thing about the black part, and I don't have one here, is it's like got a black coating on it and you would think it was anodized black but it's not it's like painted or dipped or something but over time that comes flaking off and then that gets into your tin job so well, either then the ball lock specifically what we were finding was that they had about a two-year life you know before they would break apart and no one wants to have to replace things every two years so yeah they just weren't a good idea especially if we're going to back it with a lifetime warranty but these, they hold up, and they still go bad. It's a, wear, it's a wear point. It's a swivel. It swivels free under pressure. It swivels way better than those other ones that we were using. So it's good. I can count on two hands the number of these that I've replaced, and I've probably sold close to 5,000 of them at this point. So I'm not mad at that. You know, it's, it's, it's going to happen. It's a moving mechanical part but it's the best part that i found on the market that still makes it usable for you the reason we don't crimp the ends and we use clamps is because if you should have to change something while you're out on a job you should be able to do it if you set a heat gun down in your hose and you'll find that the heat gun tip will melt through your hose because you didn't use fusion afterburn tape <laughs> i'm not saying it's ever happened before but it's happened well, actually, I wasn't going to say it's happened, but yeah. So you can unscrew the clamp. You can cut off the bad piece of hose. You can put it back together. Or if it's closer to the sprayer, you can unscrew this and put it back together all while you're out in the field with a couple of simple tools that any household mom should have in her junk drawer. Time for questions, guys. Can we at least talk about cleaning frequency? That's a question we get a lot. Absolutely. Now, my recommendation is don't let it go more than a month without cleaning. Um, you should really honestly give your, give your keg just a good rinse and dump every other fill. So this is where it's going to make a big difference. At the end of the month, if you're real scummy in here and you feel like maybe you went a little longer than you should, then you're not doing anything to take care of it, and that's fine. I don't personally. So I still do flat glass work on the weekends. Friday I went out and did a job last week, and it's sitting there with the solution in it. This weekend I'm going to go on a little vacation, and it'll be the following week before I use it again. So it's going to be kind of gross. So I won't condemn you for doing that. Just understand that the more you do that, the more cleaning there is involved. Um, and definitely every time you fill it, or at least every other time you fill it, pop your tip off, pull this out. This part is so simple. Pull that out and just make sure it's clean. And you can get away with just rinsing it under the faucet real quick. Maybe give it a little swish with your hand 
and put it back in there and you'll notice that you'll never blame the keg for contamination. Again. I don't know. He might not judge you, but I will judge you. I clean my keg anytime I'm going to store it and not use it for a while. Pretty much after every time I use it. Tim Johnson says, I seem to have good luck with distilled water and slip from flex film. Tintac's a good, I, I can't say anything bad about it. I used it for a while, mm -hmm. and, you know, it's it's really good. I personally, I use all type. I just like the fact that it's clear. I like the thickness of it. It seems like I get a lot of slip with a little use. But then again, also, I use a lot less slip because I do flat glass now, where... The guys at the shop, they use all type also, and they use a little bit more than I do because apparently there's a difference between dry adhesive and automotive PS adhesive. Go figure. What about the weird tube that connects my keg post to the bottom of my keg? How do I clean those, and how often should I be cleaning those? So, yeah. Pull it out. Dip tube. Now, this is on... Dip tube. This well, doesn't I... actually connect to the bottom of the keg, so I just want to put that out there. This just goes and sits in. Always rinse your keg out before you use it, please. Okay, let's see. So you see there's a little dimple there in the bottom? That's where the dip tube goes to. This is the dip tube. The dip tube allows you to reach into the very bottom of the keg and get most of the water in it. So no connection actually there. And then you just take your dip tube brush and your dip tube and scrub it out. And then you rinse it, and it's actually a lot easier to rinse these than you would think it is. So, distilled water, yes. It's not necessary, but... Well, I don't know. I feel like if I lived in an area with really dirty, nasty water, then I probably would. Um, the biggest issue with, like, our local water is calcium will build up, and if you're not keeping your stuff clean, um, and that goes for kegs, trigger sprayers, anything, um, over time the calcium will build up, and if you, like, clean it, but maybe don't clean it thoroughly... All you'll do is knock that stuff loose, and then you go and spray with it, and little white bits of calcium get in everything, and it ruins your life. Mary Dunham asked, should we use soap or something in our dip tube brush? Uh, you can. You will just put it on there like toothpaste. I mean, I've, I have put soap on mine before. I normally don't worry about it much. Um, the only thing that I would maybe advocate for doing that is that, you know, I can feel the outside of my dip tube. I can feel the inside of my keg. I know where the slime is. I can't feel the inside of my dip tube. So, now, maybe. I personally, with my keg, I put soap. I, I soap, I scrub, but I already told you how I take care of my keg. I it doesn't. I, I, I really doesn't. So we soaked the hell out of it and cleaned the dip tubes because who knows. Now, the dip tubes are also stainless steel. Again, don't use bleach in them. That's bad for stainless steel. Dip tube brush is, is a relatively soft bristle brush and theoretically should clean it out if you're, you maintenance it. You let your keg sit there for six months and you forget that you even had it and you're like, oh, I want to clean this out and use it again. By all means, use some soap, rinse it out thoroughly, use hot water. Everything we've talked about so far, we typically recommend warm water. If you want to be thorough, you can fill up your keg with hot water, just water, no soap because we're trying to do a clean flush, and pressurize it. Take the tip off of your sprayer and take the filter out, and then just flush all the hot water through it until it blows air, and these hoses will be absolutely clean, and you won't have to worry about anything in there. Which hose is better, the green or the blue? Uh, the blue. <laughs> the blue is better. The blue hose is a lot easier to keep clean. So it is. one important consideration that you need to be thinking about, especially if you are going into customers' houses um, because you're a flat glass installer, Alex, or maybe you have like go open cut me bays this where much customers of can see. Yellow um, is, and this looks really cool out of the box, red. but after maybe three <laughs> or four uses in like just a typical tint shop, even with cleaning it after every use, it turns a color that I can only describe as rotten banana, and that should put an image in your head. It this, is. yes, this is going to discolor over time too. Every hose will, but it's not going to be as fast, and because it's a darker color... Um, it's not as, oh my gosh, 
when you see it. So, and to give you an idea what your options are, I had Alex waste three more feet of hose for us. This is the blue one that we've been talking about. This is the one on the website. Now, if you order something and you decide you want a different color than the blue, you can pick the blue and put in the notes that you either want the red, the yellow, or the gray. Now, the gray, the yellow, the red, and the blue, they have like a satin finish where the green has a flat finish. And I think that's why these ones are easier to keep clean. Why does limp matter? I guess since we're talking about hoses, we should talk about why limp matters. Because when you're running a hose versus like a poly sprayer or a trigger sprayer, you got this hose between you and the keg that you're dragging over to the car. And those, the cheaper the hose is, the stiffer or the more memory it's going to hold. And if you got a hose curling across the floor and it's standing up like this and say your salesperson or a worse, a customer comes walking through because they need to grab something out of the car and they trip over this hose. And now all of a sudden for a couple hundred dollar tint job, you're getting sued for who knows what because somebody fell and busted their face on, on your floor. Um, that's not cool. These hoses guaranteed 100% of the time, I don't care if you're out there in the 40 or 50 degree weather tinting like a psycho, this is going to lay flat on the ground and it's not going to create a trip hazard. They want your hose to be nice and flexible so it'll lay flat on the ground so that it doesn't harm your people around you. What slip solution isn't going to gum up my tank? <laughs> Which is a really loaded one and we can't answer for you. But we can send you samples so you can figure it out. Thanks for hanging out with us. Until next Tool Talk Tuesday. Until then, we'll see you next week. You guys just have a great rest of your day.